So <clears throat> Ganesh was, uh, Vyasadeva had composed this epic literature called Mahabharata and then Ganesh ji was requested to scribe. Actually, there was a request sent that who would like to scribe it, write it. And Ganesh ji volunteered that he wanted to write it. When Ganesh ji came to Vyasadeva, he put a condition that I will write, but you should dictate continuously, non-stop. You should not stop. And Vyasadeva said, okay, I'll decide non-stop. But he also put one condition. What is that? <clears throat> that you should understand everything, whatever I am saying, then you should write. Not like copy-paste, which the students do nowadays. Right? So, suppose they have to submit a record, they will take it from a friend or a senior and then copy it and publish it. Not like copy-paste without understanding. So, <clears throat> Ganesh was trying to understand every shloka clearly and then he was trying to write it. So, in this way, Ganesh ji wrote the entire Mahabharata. Right? <clears throat> So Vasudev, in between, he was composing some difficult slokas, and these difficult slokas were took time to understand. So it took some time. So at that time, Vasudev used to compose further slokas. So in this way, Vasudev was also comfortable, and Ganesh was also comfortable. In that way, they composed. <clears throat> and in between Mahabharata is Bhagavad Gita. So Ganesh also understood Bhagavad Gita and wrote it. So, Ganesha is also a great devotee of Lord Sri Krishna. Ganeshi prays to Lord Krishna to get strength to do Vignavanasana. Yatpada Pallava Yugam Vinidhaya Kumbha Dvande Pranama Samaye Saganadi Rajaha Vignan Vihantu Malamasya Jagatraya Sego Vindamadi Purusham Tamaham Bhajami it is said that Lord uh, Ganesha keeps the lotus feet of Lord Krishna or Lord Narasimha Deva on his head and seeks his blessings. And by his blessings, he gets the strength to do Vigna Vinasham. So he is able to destroy all the obstacles on the path. <clears throat> and he is also uh, very intelligent. He gives buddhi also. So we should pray today to Ganesh Ji. To give us intelligence and buddhi to understand this concept of Bhagavad Gita. We should pray to his lotus feet to get strength. So Ganeshji is one of the devatas, demigods, but he is also a pure devotee. Right? Shuddha Bhakta of Lord Sri Krishna. So we should take his blessings and with his blessings, let's try to understand today's topic of Srimad Bhagavad Gita. So today's topic is Prakriti. So we are doing this topic of Gita in nutshell. So first today we discussed about introduction to Bhagavad Gita and then we discussed about soul. And second day, yesterday we discussed about reincarnation. Today we are going to discuss about Prakriti. Okay. So Prakriti is the third topic. This world is not all in all. Spiritual world exists. So there are two worlds. There is material world and spiritual world. So this world where we are staying is called as material world. And the other world is the spiritual world. Bhautika Prakriti, Adhyatmika Prakriti. So Bhautika Prakriti has got certain characteristics and spiritual Prakriti has got opposite characteristics. Matter and antimatter. So this material world is called this, called, this world is called material world because it is made of matter. And the other world is called spiritual world because it is made of spirit. Uh, so here you will see in this photograph. You will see Lord Krishna and Srimad Radharani in Goloka Vrindavan. So this is called as Goloka. Right? Krishna's original world which looks like a lotus. And this is Vaikunta. Vaikuntha, which is having innumerable planets where Lord Vishnu resides. And here you will see this is a world 
a small portion if the entire the whole screen is compared to the entire creation a small portion of this world is material world this is called material world it is created by lord only it is like a jail where people or the souls who disobey the lord are sent to this material world for reformation so today we will discuss a lot about material world and then we will also discuss a little bit about the spiritual world because when we are in the material world we have to know what is the nature of this material world what are the characteristics of this material world and how we can go from material world to spiritual world and why we should go from material world to spiritual world so that we will discuss today in kannada there is a wonderful saying allide namma mane illi bande sommane my real world is in spiritual world but here i have come simply right so we'll try to discuss about this world and the other world okay so that is today's topic so someone is commenting that there is okay volume is too low okay, i'll try to speak little louder for others is it clear is the voice clear or is it too low okay many are saying it's clear okay thank you so can you say what okay i'll ask you one question what is the goal of your life what is everybody looking for yes can you put it on the chat box what is the goal of your life Okay, somebody is saying, "Want to be good, so to be rich." Okay, okay. For example, you are saying, "Maybe I should open a whiteboard." Okay. Okay, somebody is saying to be rich. Why we should be rich? If you get money, what do you get from that money? Okay, you can buy a car. Why do you want a car? to be happy isn't it okay you want to be happy okay what else is there here somebody is want to be good so not to be good <clears throat> somebody is saying my death oh god please don't die your life is very valuable <laughs> yeah what is the goal of life if okay, somebody is saying good soul to be good and if you be good what right by being good what do you become if you are good others will also do good to you isn't it and that goodness will again you lead to happiness right somebody is saying i don't want my kids to suffer okay because if your kids are not suffering then you are happy ultimately it's to happiness to serve people and to feel satisfied yes serve people so by serving people they become happy and by seeing their happiness you become happy right before i don't know what is my goal but now i that i have krishna bhakti ओके अशोक स्टडी भगवंत धाम के बोल वाई यू वॉन्ट गो टू कृष्ण लोका बिकॉज यू विल बिकम हैप्पी अगेन सो अल्टीमेटली यूर लुकिंग फॉर हैप्पीनेस दैट इज द गोल ऑफ लाइफ यूर सर्चिंग फॉर हैप्पीनेस बिकॉज द सोल इज आनंद मयो अभ्यास आनंदमय अभ्यास दिस वेदांत सूत्र विच से दैट सोल इज लुकिंग फॉर हैप्पीनेस वी वांट टू बी हैप्पी दैट इज द गोल ऑफ लाइफ वी आर ऑल सर्चिंग फॉर हैप्पीनेस सर्च फॉर हैप्पीनेस सो व्हाट पीपल आर ट्राइंग टू डू फॉर हैप्पीनेस यू सी दे आर ट्राइंग टू डू दिस स्पोर्ट्स दे आर प्लेइंग गेम्स सम डू इंटॉक्सिकेशन ऑफ ड्रिंकिंग सम डू रेव पार्टीज डांसिंग विद बॉयज एंड गर्ल्स And daredevil acts, like you no know, driving a powerful bike, 
very high speed crazy fashions different different hairstyle so in this day people are trying to be happy humans are trying to be happy right happiness means improved facilities for eating sleeping mating and defending right but if we carefully observe so when animals also have this they also do eating sleeping mating and defending right so dogs also do that right and animals also have family life so there is mother there is the father the children animals also find happiness in eating right the donkey is eating sleeping cat is sleeping procreation you know the chicken lays a egg and sits on the egg it is what watsalya there is love for, for the baby and defending right when there is any danger they defend so eating sleeping mating and defending these are four things so then what is the difference between animal and humans animals also eat we also eat only difference maybe we are eating in a plate they eat very well from the street we sleep on nice curl on mattress they sleep anywhere where they get they get space right humans may mate in a sophisticated way animals also mate but they may mate publicly and defending humans defend and animals also defend we may defend with guns they defend with claws and teeth so the activities remain the same humans and animals do the same activities so eating sleeping mating and defending common in animals and humans so is human being are we sophisticated animals right uh, is that our identity being sophisticated animals or do we have much better identity like here you will see there is speciality every animal has got speciality first thing is eagle eagle has got telescopic eyes right so sharp eyes what is the speciality of a horse right what is the speciality of a horse outstanding speed correct right so there is outstanding speed and what is the speciality of a dog what is a dog speciality okay smell okay then there is loyalty what loyal elephant what is speciality strong yeah strength and is very strong and eats a lot you huge quantity of food it eats polar bear this may be a little difficult question what is the polar bear famous for polar bear polar bear adverse cavalian it is okay sleep a lot yes sleeps a lot six months it can hibernate cuckoo is famous for singing so what is this creature famous for human being what is speciality of human being manushya ka khasiyat kya hai what is the speciality of human being consciousness okay but animals are also conscious right? <clears throat> right we can earn money okay so there is something called as thinking okay animals also think right okay animals also think like if a cat is wanting to drink milk in the kitchen it sees left and right somebody is there somebody is see nobody is there it will come if somebody is there it will not come right 
than intelligence. Okay, intelligence animals also have animals know okay, what food to eat, what food not to eat. They have discrimination. Like function of intelligence is discrimination. Like if you give cow some food to eat, first it will smell. Okay, if it is good, it will eat. If it is not good, it will not eat. Right? Okay. Somebody is saying ability to question. Ability to question. Yeah, very close. Very close. Okay, somebody is saying life. Humans have life. Animals don't have life. Animals also have life. Animals also have soul. Like, remember the six changes I showed yesterday? Birth, growth, maintenance, production of byproducts, dwindling and death. Six. So animals also have that. They, they are born, they grow, they maintain, they produce puppies. Then they dwindle, become old, then they die. So those changes are there in animals as well. Okay, advanced communication abilities. Yes, we have advanced communication abilities. That's true. But animals also communicate. They also communicate. We may be having more advanced. So communication is common. But I am asking about one thing which is there only in humans and animals don't have. Right? Yes. There are some answers which is coming here. Inquisitiveness. Doing bhakti. Surrender to God. Ability to question about life and death. So these things are not there in Yes. So, speciality of human being is ability to inquire. Ability to inquire about what? Not eating, sleeping, mating, defending. That birds are also inquiring. Like birds, when they go wake up in the morning, they go chum, chum, chum. They make sounds and fly. Where is my food? Where is my food? Similarly, human being also gets up in the morning, takes bath and goes to office. Where is my work? Where is my money? What should I eat? So in this way, birds also go for working. Humans also go for working. So birds also inquire about food. Humans also inquire. And after eating, they want to sleep. And after sleeping, they want to mate. So humans also do that. See, if human being also inquires about eating, mating, sleeping, defending, then he is not human. He is animal. Human beings have the ability to inquire about who am I? Who am I? Who is God? Right? What happens after death? So these are the questions which human being can ask. Have seen any animal asking these questions? Coming to and asking, oh, who am I? What is the goal of life? They only uh, ask about eating, sleeping. Give them food, they'll be happy. And give them place to sleep, they'll be happy. But human beings can only think about these questions of life. Why am I suffering? That also. Right? Why am I suffering? So that's why in Vedanta Sutra it is mentioned that Athato Brahma Jnyasa. Jignyasa. So think about Brahman, Brahma Jignyasa. Inquire about the absolute truth. So that is the speciality of human being. So only human being has this. Animals do not have this capacity. You see, nowadays, see, Western countries have reached the summit of material advancement. Right? They have luxurious homes, they have skyscraper buildings, they have jet planes, they have latest methods of communication. Right? So, <clears throat> is human being only two legged sophisticated deluxe edition of animals or is any superior to humans? So that is explained here. Hmm? Yeah. See, in spite of all this advancement, unfortunately, modern humans are depressed, hmm? dissatisfied, full of anxiety, stressed, 
डिप्रेस्ड एंड अब ऑल अनहैप्पी राइट टेक्नोलॉजिकल एडवांसमेंट हेल्प्स मैन एंजॉय बेटर लग्जरीज फॉर बेटर ईटिंग स्लीपिंग वेटिंग एंड डिपेंडिंग दैट्स ऑल विदाउट ऑफरिंग एनी अल्टीमेट एम ऑफ लाइफ दिस सोफिस्टिकेटेड एनिमल सिविलाइजेशन दिस इज सोफिस्टिकेटेड एनिमल सिविलाइजेशन तो हेयर द वर्स फ्रॉम महाभारत व्हिच डिस्टिंग्विशेस ह्यूमंस एंड एनिमल्स आहार निद्रा भयमय तु नमच सामान्य मेत पशु भी नाणा धर्मो ही देशा मधिको विशेषो धर्मे नहीं ना पशु भी समान सो आहार निद्रा भय मैथुन इस फोर थिंग्स आहार निद्रा भय एंड मैथुन दे आर सामान्य कॉमन राइट आहार मीन्स ईटिंग निद्रा मीन्स स्लीपिंग भय मीन्स फाइटिंग मैथुन मीन्स डिफेंडिंग पशु भी नाराण सामान बहुत These are common between Pashu and Nara. Dharma hi tesha. But what is the speciality of human being? Dharma. Dharma hi tesha. Adiko vishesho speciality. Vishesha. Dharma na hi na. And if a human being gives up dharma, then he is Pashu samana. He is no, no, no different than anyone. See the word dharma has got many definitions. Right? ओके धर्म धर्म मीन्स रिलीजन हिंदू धर्म क्रिस्त धर्म इस्लाम धर्म दैट इज वन कॉमनली यूज डेफिनेशन ऑफ रिलीजन बट देर अदर डेफिनेशन दैट अदर डेफिनेशन इज दैट विच डिफाइन्स एन ऑब्जेक्ट दैट विच सस्टेन्स एन ऑब्जेक्ट दैट इज कॉल्ड धर्म फॉर एग्जाम्पल धर्म मीन्स एन इंटरेन्सिक क्वालिटी ऑफ समथिंग intrinsic quality of an object so that's called dharma for example sugar what is the duty of a sugar in intrinsic quality of sugar yes what is the intrinsic quality of sugar yes sweetness right So can you say dharma of sugar is sweetness? Yeah. So dharma of sugar is sweetness. If something looks whitish and powdery or crystals, if it is not sweet, it is not sugar, isn't it? What is the dharma of salt? And saltiness. What is dharma of water? Liquidity. so similarly ice is cold so what is the dharma of soul that is the question to be asked so dharma na hi na pashu ke saman if a person gives up the dharma of the soul he is called as a pashu so what is the dharma of the soul which it is to love and serve so dharma is uh, dharma means to love and to serve so save pumsam paro dharma yatho bhakti radho ukshaje ahetu ki apratihata yayatma suprasidati in shimad bhagavatam first canto second chapter it mentions that paro dharma the ultimate dharma of the soul is to love and to serve god which will completely satisfy him right so that is the dharma of the soul and to love and to serve whom that was the important point right so somebody is serving his uh, for example his body right he is taking care of his body only that is service right somebody serves he is serving his body he is very selfish no? and somebody is serving his relatives 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 then somebody is serving his uh, community right 
right? Somebody will be serving his nation. Right? In this way, it goes on. But you will see that body is temporary. So, the service to the body is limited. Relatives, you can serve them for 30 years, 40 years, 50 years till the time they are on this planet. Then they also leave the world. So, that love also becomes temporary. Right? And community also. Right? Communities change, communities relocate. Nation also. And when he dies, service to the nation is uh, interrupted. So, service on the bodily platform is interrupted with death. Either I die or the person whom you are serving, he dies. So, that's why when the soul serves God, Krishna, right? Krishna is absolute, he is eternal. So, when the soul serves Krishna, who is absolute and eternal, the soul becomes completely satisfied. So, this soul's service to Krishna is called as Paro Dharma. Okay. Which is mentioned in first canto, second chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam. Paro Dharma. There are other dharmas, relative dharmas, like Desha Dharma, Matra Dharma, Pitra Dharma, serving the parents, serving the relatives, serving the friends. That's called as Swadharma. So, these are all what? Whatever is told in the circle, that's called as Swadharma. Swadharma. Because he is a child, he has to serve his parents. Because the soul now is entrapped in the child's body, he has to serve his parents. When a student goes to college, his dharma is to study. Because the student body is meant for studying. And when he becomes a uh, adult, a graduate, then he has to work, earn money. That becomes his dharma. So then he will become a father. He has to take care of children. Right? So in this way, Swadharma keeps changing as per your circumstance. But Paro Dharma remains the same. Whether you are a child or you are a husband or a wife or any, anybody you are, you are a guru or a disciple, Paro Dharma is same. Paro Dharma is the ultimate Dharma. So say there is Swadharma and there is Paro Dharma. Swadharma is called as constitutional duty. Sorry, it is conditional duty. Conditional duty. Because according to your condition right now, you get certain duties. Hmm? Paro Dharma is constitutional duty. Your unchanging Dharma, that is constitutional duty. Okay. So we have to understand this. So when a person gives a Paro Dharma, right, what Bhagavatam or Mahabharata is telling here is, Paro dharma. If you give up your duty towards God, then he is Pashubhi Samana. He is no better than an animal. Pashubhi Samana. Dvipada Pashu is called. So animal can incur about eating, sleeping, mating and def defending only. But human being can incur about life, death and beyond. So, see this child, he is reading Bhagavad Gita. Right? So you should read Bhagavad Gita to find out cause of sufferings, purpose of life, and to harmonize the life with God and nature and to attain eternal peace. Right? Some people think that Bhagavad Gita is meant for old people. Saat saad hone ki baad, after you attain the age of 60, then you can read. Right? But actually, Gita is to be read in the beginning of life. For example, if you buy a washing machine, along with the washing machine, you get the manual. So, do you read the manual after the uh, uh, after the washing machine broken down or you read the manual before using the washing machine. You, you read before wash, using the washing machine because that will ha help you how to use it. Right? That will give the information. Similarly, Bhagavad Gita is manual for human life. So we should read it in the beginning of our life. And ideal age is 5 years. Right? So Pallad Maharaj says that you should read Bhagavad Gita at the age of Kaumara. Kaumara Kaum is under the age of five. Right? Kaumara, then there is Pauganda, then there is Kaishora, then there is Yavana. 
So there are four stages of life. So one should start reading Bhagavad Gita at the age of five. Of course, all of you are a little older, maybe 15, 20, 25, 30, whatever it is. But better late than never. Let's start reading now. So in human life, if you inquire about the goal of life, we are promoted to higher life. If you do not inquire, but live like cats and dogs, we are de demoted to animal life. So a human should inquire about why am I suffering and where do I go after this life? So let's see about this point of suffering. So real problem, right? A problem should be considered as a real problem if it fulfills the three criteria. It should be common to all. Common to you, common to me, common to everybody. Nobody wants it. And nobody can avoid it. If uh, a problem can fulfill these three criteria, then it is a real problem. For example, exam. Is exam a real problem? What do you say? Is examination a real problem? Okay, somebody is saying yes. CSP is saying yes. Okay, I think you are a student, isn't it? But I am not a student. Of course, I am a student of Bhagavad Gita. Uh, so, I don't have this problem of exams. right? Or an old man will not have the problem of exam. So, that's why exam is not a real problem. So, can you think of four real problems? Okay, Bhagavad Gita mentions four real problems. Can you think of can you identify these four real problems? Okay, so okay, there is okay, death, birth. Okay, I think Sunil knows all the answers. He must have attended the course. Okay, Lohitakshi is studying death. CS is telling anxiety. Anxiety, can you put it in the disease category? Okay. So anxiety is you can put in disease. Stress can be a disease. Depression can be also a disease. Okay. Death is a problem. Yeah. Everybody in this world dies. Right? Death is a problem. So, and uh, disease is a problem. Correct? Nobody wants disease, but still it comes. Right? So, these are the four real problems. Here in the next slide, you will see. And we want to be young forever, but our bodies become weak. So, this is all old age. So, old age is a problem. And no one wants to get old. Cosmetic industry is flourishing. Right? Due to the fear of old age. See, the child grow, is born, it grows becomes adult, then he finally dies. So death is a problem. Old age is also a problem. The person is old age. Um, white daddy and become cordistic. Shankaracharya says, Angam galitam phalitam mundam dashanavahinam jatum tundam vruddhoyati grihutva dhandam tadapinam unchati asha pindam So, when a person becomes old, the hairs fall, the teeth also fall, 32 teeth all out. Then third leg comes. He has to walk with a support of a stick. Right? This is old age. Right? We want to be healthy, but we get disease. The second problem. Then death. Right? So this is disease. Hmm? And death. Nobody wants to die, but unfortunately, death comes. So, birth, old age, disease, and death. So, these are the four real problems of life. Janma mrutyo jara vyadhi dukkha dosha anudarshanam. So, Bhagavad Gita says these are four, four problems. Janma, mrutyo, jara means old age. And Vyadhi. These four are the real problems of life. So, four Dukkhas and three Kleshas. So, if you see around the world, there are three Kleshas. Adhyatmika Klesha. Klesha means suffering. Okay, threefold miseries. 
Adhi Atmika means misery is arising due to body and mind. See, the word Atma refers to body, Atma refers to mind also. See, the word Atmika means body and mind. Adhi Atmika means like tension, heart attacks. Like this muzzle is dying, he gets a heart attack. Then suicides, stress. In US, one out of two cardiac that is are on account of stress. Adi Bhoti means other living entities, like cockroach or bed bugs or boss or pickpocket or terrorists. And Adi Bhautika, other living entities cause miseries to us. Then there is miseries due to natural disasters. Adi Daivika. Daiva means nature. Right? So there is earthquakes, tsunamis, like floods, like this flood. People are struggling. Famine, sometimes more water, sometimes no water. People are taking water from the river bed. Animals die. Earthquakes. So many buildings. Recently, in Morocco, there was an earthquake. So many buildings fall. Roads crack. Hurricanes. Right? Tornadoes. Right? Volcanoes. So these are all Adi, Bhautika, Adi, Daivika and Adi, Atmika places. Now, can science put a full stop to all these problems? We are done so much in technology. Has science solved this problem of disease and death? Right? Has science prevented somebody from dying? No, right? So, science cannot stop these problems, but science can temporarily uh, patch up the problems, right? See, when great people like Muhammad Ali suffered, Muhammad Ali is a very great boxing champion. He was, once upon a time, Houston, he was the greatest fighter, powerful. But now you know what happened? He got, he got Parkinson's disease. He cannot lift even coffee cup also. He is so weak. So scientists cannot put a full stop to our suffering. They can only patch up. Like for example, if you are getting headache, they may give a painkiller. If you are having backache, headache, they can give a painkiller. But if you are having loose motions, they can give a medicine which can stop motions. But they cannot cure the problem of disease. They can make you comfortable by giving some medicine, but they cannot solve the problems. Right? We invented cars, and cars with the cars, more people are dying. Right? We invented bullet trains, more people are dying. Right? See the situation of Indian trains. One scientist said, no man can fly like a bird in the sky, swim like fish underwater in a submarine. The only problem is he cannot walk on land because of pollution. So much pollution. You see this? The whole mountain of tires. Millions of tires. The science has invented bombs which can destroy, but they cannot create life. Patch up solutions are given. If you get white hair, take a Godrej hair dye and apply the hair, hair dye. And the white hair becomes, of course, all of you may be young now. But when you become old, you'll remember, oh, I want to take a Godrej hair dye. So I want to look young. Nobody wants to be old. Even if they become old, they want to hide their old age by patching it up. If they get wrinkles on the face, they use facelift, right? They tighten the skin on the head. So that the skin or the face becomes tight. So then they look young. Back pain, stomach pain is painkillers. Breathlessness and death use oxygen tubes. So old age cannot be uh, cured. See, this lady got attracted to this man who was very looking very beautiful, handsome, riding on a horse. But when he reached the destination, he was 
like this. Reality is soon exposed. Right? Old man may try to look young, but reality will be soon exposed. Science and technology cannot stop old age, cannot eradicate disease per se from earth, as hard, hardly as any understanding of life and death. Right? So science cannot solve these problems. Our situation is now like fish out of water. One fish was taken out of water and is given some money, is given some smoking, cigarette, Pepsi, there is internet, there is magazines, baseball. So everything was given. Can this fish be happy? What do you say? With all these facilities, luxurious facilities, can it be happy? No. Yes, all of you are unanimously saying no. Correct. What makes the what what will make the fish happy? If you want to make the fish happy, what do you have to do? Water, correct. Water. Yes, it just needs water. Usko paisa nahi chahiye. Usko film film magazine nahi chahiye. Usko khana nahi chahiye. Pani chahiye. So, similarly, the soul is now like fish out of water. Right? What is water? God's service. The soul has left the service of Lord and that's why he is now miserable. He is trying to eat. He is trying to have girlfriend. He is trying to uh, watch a TV. He is trying to have the latest iPhone, everything. But all these things are like giving the fish different, different items. With all these items, soul cannot be happy. You ask the richest man in the world who has everything, are you happy? You will think. Hmm. You will really think because even though he has everything, still he is not happy because there is hankering. Right? So there is hankering for something higher. So that is God's service. So soul can be happy only in Krishna's service. So we have to engage in Krishna's service to experience true happiness. Otherwise, our situation is like fish out of water. And the foolish know that he will die today or tomorrow. Okay. But the, the foolish knows that everything is temporary. Yet he is mad only after short lived pleasures. Usko pata hai, sab shani ke. Usko pata hai, pata hai ki paise se sukh ko nahi karit sakte. Right? You can buy everything with money, but you cannot buy happiness. You can buy things, but you cannot buy happiness. You cannot buy relationships. You cannot buy love of a person. You cannot buy mother's love with money. So, there are certain things which money cannot buy. So, please don't run after money. Money is important. You get money as much as you need, but but have this understanding that money cannot buy happiness. Happiness is something different than money. Okay? Yeah, money also can't buy sleep. Yeah, your know, rich people can't sleep because there's so much tension, so many crores of rupees. They have to protect it. Hmm. Right. We want to lord our material nature and want to control things without caring for God, who is the real proprietor and controller. Our life is like a journey in the train. Right. At one station, the person gets on. Second station, another person gets on. At getting down is death. Right? Our family is like a train journey. Grandfather got down. Grandmother got down. Father get, getting down. And I will soon get down. Isn't it? In this one by one, everybody goes down. So we have to understand that life is temporary. And not live life like this sheep. Right? His friends have already gone up. They have been slaughtered. But this goat is thinking, Oh, such a good day. So much grass and so lucky. This is called foolishness. So we should know that death will come one day. We have to be ready for it, right? So we suffer the threefold miseries and four real problems of life due to acting sinfully against God's laws. Just like a misused child who leaves the safe custody of parents, there is one boy who left home. Pitaji, I am going out. 
कहा जा रहे हो मुझे एंजॉय करना है अरे घर में इतना एंजॉयमेंट है खाना पीना सब कुछ मिलता है आपको खेलना खोलना कूदना मिलता है You put so many restrictions here in home. There I'll be happy. I'll be free. I want free life. So then, uh, father said, "Okay, John, he gave some money, thousands of rupees, and the child went out. And child went and and he money he was eating, enjoying. He was going to theme. He was going to some parks, going to movies, and his friends also joined him. So together they enjoyed. And after some time, money was over. Then friends left him." When money is over, friends leave, and then this fellow was wondering what to do now. Money is over, should I go back home? No, no, no. Father will be very angry, so I should earn money now. So he went and asked somebody. Some people can give some money. Give money, work hard, you are young boy, work hard. Wait should I work? Go to that garage. So he went to that garage and asked the garage owner, can you give some work? That fellow said, oh, want to work? Okay, you have to clean this car every day. Many many cars will keep coming. You have to wash the cars clean. Okay, so every day from morning to night he was washing the cars. His dress became dirty, and and with some little money he used to get, and with that he was somehow eating something and sleeping somewhere. So many days passed, and father was in anxiety. Where is my son? Where is my son? So never to be found anywhere. So one day one car came to this garage. And person from the car got down and asked the owner, "Car sab karna hai, car sab karo." And this owner got it. Chhoto idhar ab, car sab karo. And this boy came and he was trying to clean the car. Then that fellow saw and that person. So hey, you, you are washing cars here. This you are son of a such rich man, and you, what are you doing here? Come back home. That person said, "No, no, no, no." That boy said, "I don't want to go. My father will be very happy, very unhappy." Very angry. So then, no, he said, "I'll call my father." He called his father and said, "Your son is here. Mil gaya." "Acha, mil gaya." I was waiting for so much time. Please bring him back home. I am thinking about him, worrying about him. Then he put him in the car and brought home. And by the time the son came there, there was a big reception. Hundreds of people waiting, and they welcomed him. The father said, "Come, we just take bath. Night, shave yourself clean. Wear these fresh clothes." Wear the fresh shoes and come here. We'll have dinner. So then he got fresh, came and then nice dinner. Then father was in tears, welcoming him, and that son was so shocked. Father, I disobeyed you. I left you. I betrayed you. But still, you are welcoming me. The father said, "Yeah, sometimes children make mistakes, but anyway, I'm your father. So I will take care of you." Similarly, we we disobeyed Lord and came here. and we are trying to enjoy this material world but when we go back to this spiritual world krishna is waiting for us don't be hesitant that krishna is krishna is upset or angry no just go to krishna he will be very very happy to see you right so where do i go after that first question was why am i suffering i am suffering because of disobedience to god and coming here and uh, jan namrutu jara vyadi adhyatme kadi bodhi kadi devi ke klesha i am suffering so next is where do i go after death right krishna says that i am not this body i am spirit soul so you go to next life based on your desires right so we are changing bodies again and again but krishna says why are you changing your bodies again and again stop this rotation in cycle of birth and death जन्म अमृत जन्म अमृत स्टॉप दिस सो मिजरेबल कम बैक टू मी सो कृष्ण इज टेलिंग यू दिस वर्ल्ड इज दुखालय शाश्वत मामुपेत्या पुनर्जन्म दुखालय शाश्वत सो द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ दिस वर्ल्ड मटल वर्ल्ड इज दुखालय एंड अशाश्वत फुल ऑफ मिजरी दुखालय राइट आवर बॉडी कैन गिव सो मच मिजरी राइट लास्ट फोर डेज हैड ए सेमिनार इन के uh manipal we had gita course there same course i was taking official in the college and many students were attending so uh, there there are so many departments there is eye department the ear department dentistry department bones department kidney nephrons and then there is stomach and then there is skin so many hundreds of departments each organ of our body can give 
unlimited problems right so dukhale and ashashvatam is temporary so krishna is telling that mamvetya if you come to my loka then you will not have to take birth again in this world samsiddhim paramam gatah so you will attain the eternal spiritual world so then you will not have to come back to this material world so we have to endeavor to go back to spiritual world and not stay in this material world that is the goal of life okay right so parrot will die if you don't feed the parrot right we have to feed the soul by chanting the hari krishna mantra by listening to bhagavad gita by reading bhagavad gita by taking going to the temples of the lord doing some service to the lord in that way we can nourish our soul and we can go back to godhead hmm? right so krishna gives the evidence of spiritual world in bhagavad gita chapter 15 15.1 Krishna talks about a tree which is inverted roots are upwards branches are downwards inverted tree right such a tree doesn't exist in this world but Krishna says such a tree is there where is the tree that is in the reflection you see the roots are upwards branches are downwards it's upside down tree so tree actually stands like this but it is inverted tree so a reflection is unreal the main tree is real isn't it so this real tree is spiritual world and the reflection is material world so spiritual world and material world the two worlds so we are trying to enjoy illusion here right so krishna there's one story there's one queen and this queen was gifted a nice diamond necklace by the king and she went to take bath in a pond and kept the necklace nearby and the crow came and took the necklace and flew away and uh, king uh, got this news and king announced anybody who finds this diamond necklace will get 100 gold coins as a, as a reward so then many people had searching 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 and when for one person he went to take bath in a river and while taking bath he saw something shining he jumped into the river to find out actually it was a necklace so he found jumped inside he tried to catch it was not coming in the hand again he tried didn't come and one of his friend came A friend said, hey, "This is there. Necklace is here. You both of us will catch it. Fifty-fifty. You take fifty coins. I'll take fifty coins." Then tried to jump. They also didn't get. So then one learned person came, pundit came. He asked, "What are you doing? There is necklace here. Hundred gold coins reward. You please help us. We three of us will share the reward." And pundit said, "You fools. You are trying to catch the reflection. See above." so there is a tree and branches on the river like this so a crow was sitting there and the necklace was hanging there go up and catch that uh, necklace so then they got the necklace similarly in this world we are trying to enjoy material enjoyment which is reflection but the real enjoyment is spiritual happiness which is in the spiritual world hmm? so we have to enjoy spiritual happiness in the spiritual world ऊर्धमूलम अदशाखम मूलम ऊर्धम रूट्स आर अपवर्ड्स ब्रांचेस आर डाउनवर्ड्स अदशाखम अश्वत्थम इट इज पावरफुल अश्वत्थ ट्री प्राहुरव्ययम चन्नामसी अस्य परणानि यस्तम वेद स वेद वेद सो दिस इज द ट्री इनवर्टेड ट्री सो लाइक वी हैव रियल मार्बल वी हैव फेक मार्बल सो रियल मार्बल इज रियल सब्सटेंस फेक मार्बल इज इमिटेशन इजंट इट रियल करेंसी फेक करेंसी real mango imitation mango plastic mango spiritual beauty material beauty right so we have to go from material world to spiritual world because spiritual world is the world of happiness and eternity so this material world see here you will see there is a border above this is spiritual world radha krishna and uh, spiritual world above then there is the inverted tree starting from here which is reflected on material desire if we have desire to enter separately from krishna then we are sent to this material world where from satya loka the roots start and you will see the root branches are coming downwards like this shakha one shakha going like this right there is uh, see dharma artha kama moksha the different parts of the tree different fruits of the tree right there are three different fruits right there vedic hymns is the leaves 
right? And somebody is doing sinful murder here. Somebody does murder, he is demoted more down to the hellish planets. There are animals here, right? So in this way, some people are going up in this tree, some people are coming down in this tree, but doing sinful activities. It's like a snake and ladder game. It's a beautiful analogy. He is here, Devata, Surya Dev is here. Uh, there is Ganesh Ji here on the top of the, you know, in the higher planets. Saraswati Devi is here, Indra is here. So in this way, Devatas above, humans in middle, and animals down. So in this way, this tree contains everything. So this material world is full of suffering. This whole tree is full of suffering because there is death and birth here. So this is material world, negative axis. And zero, zero is peace. This is Brahma Jyoti, zero, zero. So this is Brahma Jyoti, Shanti, Shanti. And above that is spiritual bliss. So from here, wherever you are, you have to travel to spiritual world and attain Krishna. So that's how the world is designed. We should go from material world to spiritual world by doing bhakti. Okay. So there, Krishna is waiting for all of us in the spiritual world. So <clears throat> that completes our third topic about Prakriti. We discussed about two types of Prakriti, metal Prakriti and spiritual Prakriti. So tomorrow we'll discuss about Supreme Lord Krishna. I am not all in all. Supreme Lord exists. So we'll try to see this topic tomorrow. Okay. Okay. So I pause here. Now if there are any questions you can take. Yesterday we could not give much time for question answers. So today we have time. Okay. If you have questions, you can type it in the chat box or we can unmute and speak as well. We'll allow allow you to speak. Yeah, unmute is allowed. If you want to ask, you can ask. Or if you want to type, you can type. Kesh Halini is asking, thanks for your presentation. Curious to know, when the soul leaves the body, how long does it take for it to take up another material form? Actually, it depends on its karma. And some souls may immediately be born if the favorable body is ready, that favorable time and place is ready, then they may, they may be born immediately. And <clears throat> some souls may take longer time because the, that particular body or time is not right. So till the time that right moment comes, the soul will be not given the body. And when the right moment comes, then he is placed. So there may be gap of 20 years, 30 years or 40 years also uh, for a person to be reborn again. Some cases it is quite fast. Maybe in 3-4 years he is born. That case of Shukla was quite fast. And in the case of James was a little delayed in 40 years. Similarly, there, there was a case of more uh, uh, more delay as well. Right? So there is one something called as hypnotic regression uh, in which uh, I'll tell you one concept called as reincarnation. And signs of soul. Hmm. Hmm. I'm looking for that scientific term. I just forgot that scientific term. So, a person was, um, I just tougher the term. It's called as a person is taken to regression where he. He is taken back 10 years, 20 years, 30 years back and before he was born and then in his past life he is taken and suddenly a person starts speaking a language which is never spoken currently in this world. He starts speaking language which is which was spoken 1000 years or 2000 years back. Right? So one such case was there. There is a book called Demystifying Reincarnation in that Chaitanya Chandra writes this story. He says that he starts speaking such a strange language. And sometimes in regression, a person, when he went back in time, he spoke four or five different languages. 
So by that, they can understand the journey of the soul. Okay, he was in this country, speaking this language. Then the next life was here, speaking this language. Then he was here, speaking this language. Then finally, human body, speaking this language. In this way, uh, he was born in different, different places at different times. So in this way, there is some delay. How much delay? That I cannot say. Only God knows. Based on the karma, uh, he gets that. Okay. Body. Okay. CSV is asking, you said peace is Brahma Jyoti. Does it mean we can never get peace in this material world? Yeah. Are we peaceful in this material world? No. But those who are Brahman realized, those who have realized soul, they can be peaceful. Brahma Bhutaha Prasannatma Na Shochati Na Kangshati Samas Sarvesh Bhuteshu Madhvaktim Labade Param This is the 18th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Right. 18 point, I think it's 54. Brahma Bhutaha, one who has realized the soul, one who thinks that I am not this body, I am spirit soul, one has realized this statement. Such a person, na shochati, no shoka, no na akankshati, no desires. Sama sarvesh bodeshu madbhaktim labade param. So such a person is peaceful and he can go to spiritual world. So while staying in this world also one can attain peace if he understands Atma Jnana. Right? He will never be disturbed in any situation. Even if death comes, he is not disturbed. Even if great calamity comes, he is never disturbed. Right? Okay, I will tell you another verse from Bhagavad Gita. Yes, this is Yam Labdha Cha Param Labham Mannite Nadikam Tataha Yasmin Sthito Na Dukhe Na Guru Na Pi Vichalite Tam Vidya Dukha Samyoga Vyogam Yoga Sangitam What is Yoga? Krishna is defining Yoga. What is Yoga? That which gives you ultimate happiness by connection to Krishna. And when you attain that yam labdha, when you attain that authentic happiness, aparam labha manyati and adhikam tata. For such a person, even if you give him crores of rupees, big bungalow, car, he will not be allured. Because he don't want to lose that spiritual happiness. That is ultimate happiness. He will not trade uh, his bhakti for anything else. Yes means thito na dukhe na guru na api vichalyate. Right? So, yes means to the na guru na no vichalyate. In that spiritual state, even if great calamity comes in his life, he is not disturbed. So, you can attain peace by practice of yoga, even while here. Even before going to Brahma Jyoti, you can attain. Okay? Okay. Next, Ganesha asks, why the human had to die? Everybody dies. That's how our body is designed. Like, for example, mobile phones, smartphones. Why you have to change? After five, maybe three, four years, it, it, it's old. Lifespan is like that. So, nature of material world is it deteriorates. We have to change. Buildings, 60, 70, maximum 100 years, they fall. You have to build a new building. So, that is the nature of this world. You break and build and break and build. So, human body is also designed to work for 65, 70 years. Sharad is asking, after death, that soul can see this material world. And once he goes to the spiritual world, can he see the material world? Yeah, he will see. He will see like a place of misery. I don't want to go there. <laughs> right? Once you go there, he will never come back. The experience here will be so bad that I don't want to come here. I will be in the spiritual world. Right? So this his experience in the material world will appear like a dream to him. A bad dream. I don't want to experience that dream. Shalin is again asking, what happens to the soul in the time between exiting one body and taking up another body? Where does the soul exist in this window? Yeah. So, generally he is taken to the custody of Yamaraj. Right? When the, he is taken here, he, after he dies, he is taken. And Yamaraj decides, okay, he is supposed to go to this place. Right now the time is not ripe, so he will keep him somewhere safely. Okay. And then he is awarded next life. And in case he is very sinful, very, very sinful, the Amara says, oh, he is not supposed to go back to earth again. So let him go to one of these hellish planets. 
let him suffer right that 28 hellish planets and according to the his sinful activity he is made to suffer and those karmas are removed and then after that he is born again in this earth okay so some people go to heaven a oh, very good karma yamara sends them to heaven and then they enjoy this happiness in heaven and then after their punya is over they come back down to material world or bhuloka okay so the souls can either go to hell and come back or they go to heaven and come down so and uh, some souls who are supposed to be born, born on earth immediately they are kept there in the custody till the time they uh, their karma matches or the time appropriate time comes okay okay so cs is asking are you currently in brahma bhuta stage or in the process yes i am in the process of going there and we all can go together to that brahma bhuta stage so it is a matter of practice somebody is very close somebody is just a beginner somebody has already reached right so we should follow those who have already reached and follow or sometimes you can follow those who are already on the path who are ahead of us we just follow them we will reach the destination so that's parampara yeah. Shalini is again asking, Guruji, can you explain why we consider Lord Krishna as the Supreme Person of God? Asking since Krishna is Vishnu Atara. We will discuss about this tomorrow. And many people think that Krishna is Vishnu Atara, but where is it mentioned? Is it mentioned somewhere that Krishna is Vishnu Atara? But in fact, the opposite is mentioned that Krishna is source of all the Vishnus. Vishnu Asto Trini Rupani Purushakyan Yatho Viduhu Ekastu Mata Srishti Dutiam Tanda Samsitam Pritiam Sarva Bhutastam Danigatva Nimchate. So there are three types of Vishnu. The Vishnus to three Nirupani, three types of Vishnus. Purushakhyani Ato Vidhu. Ekam tu Mahata Srishti. The first one creates Mahatattva, who is called as Mahavishnu. Dvitiyam, second Vishnu is Garbhadakshaya Vishnu, who is under Samstitam, who stays in the universe, inside the universe. Tritiyam Sarabhutastam, third Vishnu is there in every atom, every molecule, in everybody's heart. He is called Paramatma. Tani, Gyatva, Vimuchate. So one who knows these three Vishnus attains Mukti. So if you say that Vishnu, uh, Krishna comes from Vishnu, then which Vishnu? Krishna comes from. In fact, Srimad Bhagavatam says that Krishna comes from Vishnu. So this is from Lagu Bhagavatam Amrita. Right? Satvata Tantra. Right? It's quoted in Satvata Tantra and quoted by uh, Sanatan Goswami in Lagu Bhagavatam Amrita. Right? Jagrahe Purusham Rupam Bhagavan Mahadadi Bihi Sambhutam Shoda Shakalam Ado Lopas Srikshaya. Right? In the beginning of the creation, the first, the Lord first expanded himself in the universal form of Purusha incarnation. The Lord here is Krishna. Lord Krishna expanded as first Purusha and manifested all the ingredients of the material creation. This is called Mahavishnu or Karanudakshaya Vishnu. Okay. And second Vishnu is here. Yasyam Prasishaya Anasya Yoga Nidra Vidan Vataha Navi Hridam Bujadasi Brahma Vishnu Sri Rampatihi. And from Ma Vishnu emanates Garbhadaksha Vishnu, from whose Navi comes a lotus on which Brahma Vishnu Sri Rampatihi Brahma is sitting. So that is second Vishnu called Garbhadaksha Vishnu. And third Vishnu expands everywhere and is in every atom. He is called as Shiradakshaya Vishnu. Okay. So this is mentioned in Shiva Bhagavatam. Okay. And there is also another verse which says that Krishna Stu Bhagavan Swayam. Swayam Bhagavan is Krishna and all the avatars come from Krishna. So this is an elaborate topic. I can go on hours together on this topic. Maybe I'll just show you one.
दिस इज माइंड ब्लोइंग थिंग फॉर यू अवतार तत्व ऑफ अवतार फर्स्ट इज कृष्ण फ्रॉम कृष्ण कम्स स्वयं प्रकाश इज ओन एक्सपेन्शन लाइक बलराम एंड प्रभाव प्रकाश वैभव प्रकाश प्रभाव प्रकाश इज लाइक कृष्ण एक्सपेन्शन टू सिक्सटीन थाउजेंड वन नॉट एट फॉर्म्स एक्जैक्टली आइडेंटिकल फॉर्म्स टू बी विद क्वींस राइट एंड वैभव प्रकाश इज बलराम तदेकात्म रूप अवेर ही कॉम्स एज विष्णु फॉर्म्स राइट एंड विष्णु मूर्ति इन वैकुंठ नारायण तो नारायण कॉम्स ही then there is swamsha which are six in category leela avatar purusha avatar guna avatar shakti vesha avatar manvantara avatar and yuga avatar okay so one of the swamsha is purusha avataras karuna daksha vishnu garbha daksha vishnu and shiva daksha vishnu so out of this six types of avataras who come to this material world see these vilasa expansions are in spiritual world only vaikuntha lokas in narayana they are there but swamshas come from Uh, come this material world and they all are six category leela avatar purusha avatar guna avatar shakti vesha avatar manvantara avatar yuga avatar there are six categories and each of the category has several avatars coming so all comes from krishna krishna is to bhagwan swayam so this chart is taken from shrimad bhagavatam bhram samhita and other related scriptures okay now okay prasad is telling All animals and humans created by God only, but why humans are different, and why humans are even religious? But so many people for different religions, and for all the animals are going one, and for all our animals are following one religion. I, if I rightly understand your question, you say that if uh, why only religion for humans? First question. Second question is uh, why animals don't follow religion? actually there are uh, different actually one religion is only there which is sanatan dharma which is to love and serve god that is soul's relationship with god now the soul may be born in hindu family and we call the body as hindu body somebody is born in a muslim family we call him muslim body but soul is the same there is no hindu soul muslim soul christian soul and um, parsi soul atheistic soul no there is no different soul there is only one soul which is mame vamsu jeeva loke jeeva bhuta sanatana eternally fragmental part and parcel of god that is so when the soul out of karma takes birth in a certain family we call him by that designation soul is born in a brahmana family called brahmana is born in a kshatriya family called kshatriya but soul has no identity of brahmana kshatriya vaishya shudra soul is soul but the body has got some identity so we identify the body with the soul that's a mistake yasyatma buddhi hi guna petri dhatuke so when you identify the body as the soul then that becomes a problem of quarrel and fighting so when you actually when people come actually to the platform of soul then they cannot they will not quarrel they will be peacefully existing in this world right so we have to have the wisdom to find unity among diversity of religions in this world so if you see teachings of all religions some religions are common all religions say that worship sir lord worship the lord dedicate your life to lord that's what is the main teaching of all religions and want to try to focus on that loving and service to god okay the differences may be there but differences we should ignore it Okay, we know this thing. It's difficult to understand Bhagavad Gita and Swarupa. It's easier way is there to understand. Yeah, we attend these classes. It becomes very easy to understand, right? So when you read Sanskrit, it may be difficult, but when you read in your own language, English, and you start attending these classes, and then you'll learn some some more details of it. You'll start getting interest in it. Then you can do self studies. Like after Gita and Nachal, we also do further. Courses where we study uh, important concepts of Bhagavad Gita in detail, right? You can continue your attending the sessions and you learn more. Hmm? Okay, how to overcome the strong illusion of Maya and try to situation in the complete knowledge? Yeah, when Krishna is asking. So to overcome Maya, there is only one way, which is you have to surrender to Krishna. Krishna says that this Maya is my energy. 
ದೈವಿಹೇಶ ಗುಣಮಯಿ ಮಮ ಮಾಯ ದುರತ್ಯ ಮೆನಿ ಶ್ಲೋಕಸ್ ಟು ಯು ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ಆರ್ ಆನ್ಸರ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಫೋರ್ಟೀನ್ ದೈವಿಹೇಶ ಗುಣಮಯಿ ಮಾಯ ಇಸ್ ಮಾಯ ಇಸ್ ಮೈ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಮಮ ಮಾಯ ದುರತ್ಯ ವೆರಿ ಡಿಫಿಕಲ್ಟ್ ಟು ಕ್ರಾಸ್ ಮಾಂ ಏವೇ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯಂತೆ ಬಟ್ ಇವ್ ಸರೆಂಡರ್ ಟು ಮೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೇಸ್ ಮಾಂ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯಂತೆ ಇವ್ ಸರೆಂಡರ್ ಟು ಮೀ ಮಾಯ್ ವಿಲ್ ಲೀವ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಸಪೋಸ್ ಯು ಗೋ ಟು ಸಂಬಡಿ ಇಸ್ ಹೋಮ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಡಾಗ್ ಇನ್ ಚಾರ್ಡ್ ಆಸ್ ಸೀನ್ ಇಸ್ ಓಪನ್ ದ ಗೇಟ್ ಬೌ 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 ದನ್ ಟಾಕ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ರನ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಯುವರ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಟು ಬೈಟ್ ಯು ಅಂಡ್ ಯು ಕಾಲ್ ಯುವರ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ ಹೇ ಸುನೀಲ್ ಅವರ್ ಹೇ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ದಿಸ್ ನೇಮ್ ಇಸ್ ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ ಮೀ ದೆನ್ ದೆನ್ ದ ಓನರ್ ಸೇಸ್ ಪಪ್ಪಿ ಟಾಮಿಂಗ್ ಸ್ಟಾಪ್ ಇಮಿಡಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಟಾಮಿ ಸ್ಟಾಪ್ ದಟ್ ಡಾಗ್ ವಿಲ್ ಸ್ಟಾಪ್ ಸಿಮಿಲರ್ಲಿ ಮಾಯ ಇಸ್ ಕ್ಯಾಚಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ಹರಸಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ಯು ಕಾಲ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಯು ಕಾಲ್ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ದೆನ್ ಮಾಯ ವಿಲ್ ಸ್ಟಾಪ್ ಹರ್ ಹರಾಸ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಓಕೆ ಡಿಪೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ಇಂಟೆನ್ಸಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಅವರ್ ಕಾಲ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ರೆಸಿಪ್ರೋಗೇಟ್ಸ್ ಶರತ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಸಿಂಗ್ ಜಿ ಇನ್ ದ ಬುಕ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಆಫ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಈಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಬುಕ್ ಗರುಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಇಸ್ ಅವರ್ ಆಫ್ ಗಾಡ್ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಐ ಆಮ್ ನಾಟ್ ಶ್ಯೂರ್ ವೆದರ್ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ರೆಫರೆನ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಸೊ ಇನ್ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತಂ ಇನ್ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತಾ ದಿಸ್ ರೆಫರೆನ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಈಸ್ ದ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಈಸ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಓಕೆ ರೆಫರ್ ಟು ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರಸ್ ಗೋ ಟು ಗೋ ಟು ದ ರೂಟ್ಸ್ ರೆಫರ್ ಟು ದ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರಸ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಸೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಈಸ್ ಒರಿಜಿನ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದಾರಸ್ ಓಕೆ ಪ್ರಸಾದ್ ಈಸ್ ಆಸ್ಕಿಂಗ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಎ ಕ್ಷತ್ರಿಯ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಈಟ್ ನಾನ್ ವೆಜ್ ಸೊ ಕ್ಷತ್ರಿಯಾಸ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಅಲೌಡ್ ಟು ಈಟ್ ಮೀಟ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದೇ ವಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಫೈಟಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಫಾರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಆರ್ ಸಮಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಬ್ಯಾಟಲ್ ಫೀಲ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೇ ಮೆ ನಾಟ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಈಟ್ ಸಮಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಸಮಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ದೇ ಈಟ್ ಸಮ್ ಎನಿಮಲ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ಫೈಟಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಲೌಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ದೆನ್ ಸೊ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಅ ಫೈಟರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಫೈಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ನೇಷನ್ ಆರ್ ಕಂಟ್ರಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯುವರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸ್ಯಾಕ್ರಿಫೈಸ್ ಯುವರ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಕಂಟ್ರಿ ದೆನ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಈಟ್ ರೈಟ್ ಎಸ್ ಒನ್ ಕ್ಷತ್ರಿಯ ಸ್ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಕ್ಷತ್ರಿಯ ಪರಿವಾರ ದೇ ಕಾಲ್ ಮೀ ಫಾರ್ ಎ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಸಂಡೇ ಈವ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟು ಕ್ಷತ್ರಿಯ ಸಮಾಜ ದೇ ಕಾಲ್ ಮೀ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಲೇಡೀಸ್ ವರ್ ದೇರ್ ಆಸ್ ವೇರ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಮೆನ್ ಕ್ಷತ್ರಿಯ ದೇ ಶುಡ್ ಲಿಸನ್ ಟು ಹೋಗಿ ಗೀತಾ ಓ ಟುಡೇ ಸಂಡೇ ಈವ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಸರ್ ಪ್ರಭು ಜಿ ಎರಡು ಡೇಸ್ ಗಾಂಗ್ ಫಾರ್ ಈಟಿಂಗ್ ವಾಟ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಈಟಿಂಗ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಈಟಿಂಗ್ ಮೀಟ್ ಟುಡೇ ವೈ ಸಂಡೇ ಈವ್ನಿಂಗ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಕ್ಷತ್ರಿಯ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಶುಡ್ ಡ್ರಿಂಕ್ ಬ್ಲಡ್ ದೇ ಶುಡ್ ಈಟ್ ಮೀಟ್ ಅರೆ ವೈ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಕಿಲಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ನೋಸೆಂಟ್ ಎನಿಮಲ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಈಟಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಅವರ್ ಟ್ರೆಡಿಷನ್ ಸೊ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಕಟಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಈಟಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ಲಶ್ ಇನ್ನೋಸೆಂಟ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಚರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ವಾಟ್ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ಬಿಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ಸಮಡಿ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಎ ಕ್ಲಾತ್ ಶಾಪ್ ಸಮಡಿ ಇಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಎ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದಟ್ ಗಿಫ್ಟ್ ಶಾಪ್ ಸಮಡಿ ಇಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಎ ಗ್ರೀನ್ಸ್ ಬಿಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಸಮಡಿ ಇಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ಆರ್ ಡಿಫರೆಂಟ್ ಡಿಫರೆಂಟ್ ಎಲೆಕ್ಟ್ರಾನಿಕ್ ಶಾಪ್ಸ್ ನೋಡಿ ಸರ್ ಆರ್ ದಿ ದಿಸ್ ಮೇ ಬಿ ದೇ ಬಾರ್ನ್ ಇನ್ ಕ್ಷತ್ರಿಯ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲಿ ಬಟ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಆಕ್ಯುಪೇಷನ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಕ್ಷತ್ರಿಯ ದೇ ಆರ್ ವೈಶ್ಯಸ್ ಆಕ್ಯುಪೇಷನ್ ಇಸ್ ವೈಶ್ಯ ಸೊ ವೈ ಟು ಅನೆಸರಿ ಕಾಲ್ ಕ್ಷತ್ರಿಯ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕಾಸ್ ವೈಲೆನ್ಸ್
schools, people. In our library, we have it here in the temple. Hmm? Yeah, this is the book available. We are done with Goloka Chandragas. I am putting the I have put the link in the chat box here. You can go through this book. What is Kshatriya Dharma? Yes, very good question. Um, so Brahmana's duties, so you can read 18.43. Okay. 18.43. 18.40 is Brahmana's duties, Brahmana Dharma, and 18.43 is Kshatriya Dharma. Shauryam tejo dhritir daksham yudhe chapya palayanam danam ishvara bhavascha shatram karma sabhavajan shauryam heroism. That is very powerful. Uh, tejo means power, shauryam means shurta. Shurta means he is not darpak, he is very confident, determined, he is ready to take risk. That is shauryam. Dhritihi determination. Daksham, resourcefulness or expertness. Yudhecha api apalayanam. Right? He will not run away from the bed. He will die, but he will not run up. That is Kshatriya. Right? Sometimes in the battle, uh, sometimes somebody is very afraid he will run away. So when he comes home, the wife of the Kshatriya will ask, Pete the cow. And he has to open his shirt and show his back. So then if some arrows are hitting there, or were hit there, then she will say, you ran away from the battle? And you got the arrows in your back? Darpo, Vapas jau, fight. So in that way, even Kshatrani, she was also very powerful, Kshatrani. So they will not tolerate a covardness. So Yudhya Chakya Palayan, Dhanam, generosity, giving charity. Ishwara Bhava, having leadership qualities. Ishwara Bhava. Kshatram, Karma Subhavajam, these are the qualities of Kshatriya. Vaishya, Krishi, Goraksha, Vanijam, Vaishya, Karma Subhavajam, Krishi, Agriculture, Goraksha, Protecting Cows, Vanijam, doing business based on what they grow from land and cows. So that is Vanijam. Vaishya, Karma Subhavajam. So doing business is Vaishya's duty and Paricharyatmakam karma, shudras happy sabhavajam. Shudras duty is to serve all the above uh, varnas. Brahmanas duties are mentioned. Shamo dhamma tapashocham, sense control, mind control. Uh, Shamo means actually peacefulness. Dhamma means self control. Shamo means mind control, dhamma means sense control. Tapa doing austerities. The Shocham cleanliness, very clean. Brahman is very clean. The room and the book and the table and the cloths are very clean. That is clean. Kshanti Arjavam, right? So Kshanti means what? Kshanti means tolerance. Right? If somebody insults them, they'll tolerate. Right? They'll not retaliate. Arjavam is honesty or simplicity. Jnanam, Vijnanam, they have knowledge and they have realized knowledge, wisdom. Astikyam, religiousness or faithfulness. Brahma, karma, subhavajam. So these are the qualities of Brahmana. So in these slokas, qualities of Brahmana, Kshetra, Vaishnava, Chutra are mentioned. Why there are so many dharma like Hinduism, Muslim, Christian? Why can't, can't be one dharma? Yeah. So, <clears throat> according to time, place, circumstance, certain instructions are given to them so that they can understand. Like Sanatan Dharma was spoken by Krishna to Arjuna. Arjuna is such an elevated personality. To him, the highest thing was spoken. And Christianity was spoken to fishermen that were eating meat every day. And Islam was spoken to people, right? Quran was spoken to people who were in the desert, uh, uncultured people. And they were eating anything and everything. Right? So that's why Muhammad has to tell them, don't eat pigs. Mm -hmm. 
and you're eating pigs also and your total don't have sex with your relatives mother and father mother and sister like that so in this way very very basic moral instincts are given there so according to the level of the audience some religion is given to them uh, so that they become little pious right but sanatan dharma gives the highest thing and sanatan dharma is the oldest existing religion on earth isn't it so we should follow sanatan dharma it is the oldest and the highest and people they in the name of religion do their own sense gratification so that's where this terrorism and other things are starting because they don't understand the true meaning of their dharma so that's why there is so many differences okay sharad reddy brahma is the supreme law no, brahma is only the controller of mode of rajaguna so brahma ji comes here as uh, guna avatar so in guna avatar there is brahma who is controller of mode of rajaguna so vishnu is the controller of satguna and shiva is the controller of tamoguna so these are the three incarnations satva rajas and tamas they are called guna avatars okay how to elevate knowledge to wisdom vengatesh is asking yes by practice a practice so tomorrow i will tell you practice of chanting meditation by practicing uh, concepts of gita in your life you can realize it becomes wisdom like you study theory in the college classroom then you go to the lab and do practical so when you do practicals then the theory becomes realized similarly this classes are theory then you start practicing that becomes practical okay so i think all the questions are answered and i'm very happy with your questions very intelligent thoughtful questions so please uh, come tomorrow tomorrow is the last session gita and natcha and we'll be making announcements about further programs as well tomorrow and uh, also certificates will be sent to through email to all of you after tomorrow's session maybe in this week you will get the certificates okay so let's meet tomorrow and some of you wanted to come to meet in the temple yes you can come to meet uh, i'm here for a couple of days so i'm here till month end but i may go out for two days maybe this weekend i may be out but if you come any of the weekdays i'm here you can meet me you please text yashwant guru and then so that you can tell me generally i am available free in the afternoons and uh, evenings that is the free time mornings i am busy till 1 o'clock then services and meetings afternoon or evening will be better time to meet okay hari krishna thank you so much we we'll meet again tomorrow hari krishna hari krishna thank you for joining so we'll end the meeting here